many applications, it's important to know what happens when a liquid meets a solid surface. For instance, we want paint to spread evenly on walls, while we wish rain to be repelled by windshields and window panes. For instance, as a water drop with a millimeter size is brought in contact with a plastic surface, we see that this drop partially spreads until it adopts the shape of a lens with a millimeter size contact with a substrate. The angle at which the liquid air interface meets the solid is called the contact angle. This quantity can be varied by changing the different phases solid, liquid and vapor. While water meets plastic with an angle close to 90 degrees, mineral oil makes an acute angle of about 45 degrees on the same solid. It's even possible to observe extreme values for the contact angle. On the one hand, a fluorinated oil, less cohesive than the mineral oil, fully spreads on the solid, which corresponds to a contact angle equal to zero. On the other hand, a highly cohesive liquid, such as mercury, hardly wets the substrate, which indicates a contact angle close to its maximum value, 180 degrees. The observation of multiple configurations for the deposited drops arises from the fact that we have three kinds of interfaces in a wetting situation. That between the solid and the liquid, that between the solid and the air, and that between the liquid and the air. We can now understand what fixes the contact angle made by a liquid on a solid. For this purpose, we can make a sketch of the solid on which we deposit a drop of liquid. And this liquid meets the solid with the unknown contact angle theta. This is a solid, this is a liquid, and this is the air which is around. Because the contact angle is a very local quantity, we can make a zoom on this region. What we have is, of course, still the solid. And the liquid now makes a straight line because it's a liquid, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's very local. And we realize that there is a very special place, this point, which in reality is a line, which is called the contact line. Uh, this point, which is the point where all the different interfaces end. For instance, the solid air interface ends at this point, the solid liquid interface ends exactly the same way, and the liquid air interface also finishes in the orange region. Because of the uh, minimization of surface energy, uh, we have three forces which are acting at this point, to minimize the corresponding surface area. For instance, the solid air uh, surface tension draws a line to the right to make less surface area between solid and air. The solid liquid interface acts the opposite way. And finally, the third interface, the one between liquid and air, draws uh, the point in this direction. At equilibrium, all these forces must balance, and if we project them on the horizontal, we get a very simple relationship, which is that gamma SA must be balanced by the sum of gamma SL and gamma cosine theta, the projection of gamma on the horizontal. From that, we immediately deduce as Thomas Young did in 1805, a very old relationship, that cosine theta is gamma SA minus gamma SL over gamma. So we find that once we fix the nature of the solid, liquid, and uh, surrounding phase, air in this case, then we fix the contact angle. Can we predict the contact angle? Not really, because uh, unfortunately, uh, nobody knows how to measure the solid uh, surface tension, the one between solid and air, and the one between solid and liquid. So here, there is a kind of paradox. 
This formula, which is absolutely essential to understand many, many interfacial phenomena, cannot be proved and was not proved uh, experimentally. However, it's very useful and we are going to, to see a few examples of uh, how useful it is. This fourth argument, which was more or less the one that Thomas Young used, is very subtle uh, and uh, it has a major drawback. It cannot be used in more complex situations. It's subtle because, for example, we see immediately on the sketch, which is there, that there is also a vertical component for the surface tension, uh, which draws the line to the, well, uh, to the sky. And uh, this means something. It means that once you deposit a drop on a solid, as we did here, this drop, or to be more precise, the contact line, draws a little bit on the solid, and this solid can resist because of its elasticity. So this little deformation very generally is not visible uh, with the naked eye. You need very sophisticated uh, probes to see uh, this uh, little deformation at the contact line. Well, this formula that we de derived is so important that I think it's, it's useful to derive it in another way. And for that, we go back to energetic arguments. We have a solid. Uh, we start again this experiment where a drop is deposited. And as this drop is spreading, it somehow explores the solid. And so the contact line at some point is here with the angle theta. And it does a little jump to the right here. This is a zoom in the contact line region. And because this little jump has a very little, small amplitude, dx, the contact angle hardly changes. It remains the same theta. And we, we can look at the variation of surface energy when this little jump is made. The variation of surface energy per unit uh, length in the contact line uh, can be written uh, as follows. Firstly, we created a new surface between solid and liquid. So we have a contribution which is gamma SL times dx. Secondly, we suppressed the corresponding uh, surface area in solid air interface. And finally, we increased a little bit the surface area between liquid and air by a quantity which is dx cosine theta. So here, we must add a third contribution, which is gamma cosine dx. And of course, at equilibrium, uh, we must be in a well of energy. And as a consequence, dE must be 0. And if dE is 0 in this relationship, immediately we recover the contact angle, which was derived straightfully by uh, Young's argument. When we look once more at Young's equation, we realize something interesting. If we treat the three parameters, the three surface tensions, as independent quantities, there is no real reason for this quantity, this for this ratio, to be between minus 1 and plus 1, which defines a cosine. And indeed, extreme situations of wetting uh, cannot be described by Young's equation. And this is something we can realize with a very simple sketch. Firstly, if we are in a case where the liquid chooses to invade the solid, we expect that a tongue of liquid will develop and spread on the solid. And the scale of this film will be nanoscopic, very typically a monolayer of molecules. And it is drawn by the fact that we still have a contact line. And so, so we can still do Young's construction, which consists of expressing the fact that gamma SA is drawing the line and resisted by the action of gamma SL and gamma. So we see that, indeed, the liquid should propagate and spread on the solid, provided surface tension between solid and air is larger than the sum of surface tension between solid and liquid and surface tension between liquid and air. And when we look at this inequality, we realize that it exactly corresponds to 
a ratio, Young's ratio, larger than unity, in which case you cannot define a cosine. Uh, this corresponds to the case where the contact angle fixes to zero. Conversely, we have cases where the liquid which is placed on the solid, a case which actually is quite exceptional, but it, it, it does exist, this liquid chooses to avoid the contact of the liquid. And so we still have a kind of tongue which is propagating, but it is propagating the other way, so that you place a thin layer of air between the liquid and the solid. If we look at the balance of forces, this air is drawn by solid-liquid interface, and it is resisted by both solid air interface and solid uh, liquid air interface. So this situation will happen if gamma SL is larger than the sum of gamma SA plus gamma. And if you look once more to this equation, you realize that it corresponds to the case where this quantity is smaller than minus one. And in this case, the angle uh, is fixed at its maximum value, which is 180 degrees. It is sometimes useful to modify the contact angle prescribed by Young's relation. Applying an electrical field between the drop and its insulating substrate is a way to induce such a modification. The drop acts as a capacitor that tends to minimize its electrical energy by spreading. Hence, contact angles in electrowetting are sensitive to the applied voltage. This process is reversible and it is exploited to build liquid lenses with an adjustable focal length. The way soft solids interact with liquids is particularly rich. For instance, a water drop placed on a thin plastic sheet will spectacularly deform its substrate, which wraps almost completely the liquid. In a hydrophilic situation, the surface energy of the solid decreases when it is wet, and this decrease is enhanced here by maximizing the solid-liquid contact, made possible by the flexibility of the solid. The movie is accelerated, and we observe all the successive shapes of the sheet as water evaporates. The final shape corresponds to the complete evaporation of water. Elastocapillarity is the field where we have such an interplay between wetting forces and elastic forces. Elastocapillary effects can be quite subtle. In this movie, water drops condense from the atmosphere on a cold substrate of variable elasticity. The dark vertical lines show the regions of maximum softness, and we observe that the condensed droplets tend to self-propel and to accumulate along these lines. In a hydrophilic situation, the surface energy of a drop is smaller in the regions where it can be wrapped by the solid, that is, the softer regions. This effect can be exploited to manipulate and concentrate droplets at the very small scale of a dew.